Good evening, friends and family, and thank you for coming to another night with Repair, Restore, and Grow Black Communities and our podcast, Behind Black Business. And we have another wonderful guest for you tonight here in our Chicago area, Sister Imani Muhammad, who is the proprietor of Imani's Original Bean Pies and Specialty Shop located at 2421 East 75th Street here in Chicago. And Sister Imani, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us tonight. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, it's Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We started this organization and podcast and many other things that we do because we want to make a difference in our community. And everybody has to play a part. And so we felt the best way to do this was to support our black businesses. You know, our black businesses, as we say every week, are the ones that are going to give back to our community. Many other people have come into our community and set up businesses uh, and made a lot of money and taken the money with them and not giving back. Our black businesses are going to mentor they're going to provide other entrepreneurial opportunities. Um, they're going to do business with other black businesses. You know, they're going to help to circulate that dollar in our community, along with providing a service that um, develops a relationship where you're going into here into this establishment and you're doing business with this person and you're establishing a relationship with them. I received a phone call just prior to this uh, podcast, um, Sister Amani, from uh, Minister Ben Willis, yes. who's one of your customers and obviously one of your admirers. Of, and he was calling me, you know, to find out about you being on this on this podcast. And this is this is this is relationships. You know, it's not just somebody coming in your store or establishment and just buying buying a pie from you. And so we have to support our businesses. And when you go into communities where the people own the businesses in the community, it's more of a community and it's more able to thrive. And so that's why we decided to try to do something to help our businesses. And that's why we have this podcast every every week and um, are able to interview wonderful people individuals in the community like yourself yes ma'am and it sounds yeah. like we all pretty much started for the same reasons to mm -hmm. be beneficial to be assets to our community um whether we're working with the youth or elders for that matter which, but we all pretty much have that same goal in mind and that's right pleasure because we get to meet so many uh at least me i get to meet so many good people like yourself dr ben that's right. um just because i'm in business and that's right they say like minds will come together we'll absolutely absolutely and um we are also great proponents of reading and we really support our uh bookstores yeah. And uh, we used to have 22 black bookstores here in Chicago that dwindled down, but we do have a resurgence of black bookstores. And if you go to our website at rrgbc.org, we have all of our bookstores listed. Some are brick and mortar and some are online, but they have a wonderful uh, assortment of books in their establishments and uh we think so much of our bookstores that we do a book giveaway every month oh great and we feature a black bookstore every month 
So the bookstore for this month is Afriware Books, uh, located at 1701 First Avenue in Maywood, Sister Nzinga. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody knows Sister Nzinga. She has a wonderful bookstore. She does a lot of programs. And uh, she's our bookstore of the month. And so she chose the book for our book giveaway, which is Feeding the Soul Because It's My Business by Tabitha Brown. Ah, I have that book. <laughs> you have that book? Yes. Okay. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. You have I have the journal as well to kind of, you know, jot down thoughts, ideas. and, and Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. The, she had a vegan, a, a vegan show. She was an aspiring uh, actress. And then she ran into some health challenges with the autoimmune uh, problem. And so she's talking about her journey and how she's, she's dealing with all of this, you know, right. by love, uh, not, not judging people, uh, using love and kindness, you know, mm -hmm. and and that's 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 what this book is about. Right. She, mm -hmm. she has some awesome stories that she can tell. And I, I like the way she opened up. She opened it up kind of, I don't want to give it away because you're giving the book away, but she kind of opened okay. it up in a way that most people probably wouldn't. Okay. The story, the first okay. story that she told, well, you know, it's not always easy to tell everyone. Yes. You know. Yes. <laughs> so I don't want to get a book yeah. away, but I Yes, yeah, so she so she's being honest. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 And we and need can... we need those we need those truths. Yeah. So if you want to um win a copy of this book, go to rrgbc.org and subscribe. That's all you have to do is become a subscriber. We purchase the book, we pay for the shipping, and it is sent directly to you as a gift from us. And hopefully you will read it and share it. And hopefully you will also look at supporting uh, Afriware Bookstore. Yes. And so every month there's a book given away. And so we've given some wonderful books away. We want you to support our bookstores. Reading is very important. Uh, knowing our history, you know, we're watching the news and we see how certain people are trying to squash our history. Um, yes. Don't want our children to know our history and our perspectives. Uh, it's, it's just really something when you start talking about black people, everybody starts running to the four corners. Right. You know, <laughs> it's, a, right. it's taboo, you know, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have some wonderful bookstores and we are great supporters of our bookstores. So we want you to support Afriware and all of the other our bookstores. Like I say, go to rrgbc.org and we have all of them listed on our website. We also support the Southside Community Federal Credit Union, uh, Greg Brown over there, um, who's been in existence for over 20 years giving loans, giving financial literacy classes um, and information to the community. Um, we want to support him. In order for a bank, any kind of banking, the financial institution to thrive, people have to make deposits. So we ask that people go and um, open an account at the Southside Community Federal Credit Union. They're located in the shopping mall, in the back, the rear, rather, right there at 55th and uh, Wentworth right. off of the uh, expressway, the Dan Ryan Expressway, Southside Community Federal Credit Union. And finally, um, I want to backtrack a little bit about the bookstores. We have a public policy piece on the table where we want um, our schools and our libraries to give contracts to our bookstores. Our bookstores have VIN numbers and teachers are able to purchase, but the schools can also take a percentage of those books that they're getting, especially the uh, books about black history. Uh, you can purchase those books from our bookstores and that would help our bookstores tremendously. So we ask you to go to Save Black Bookstores in Chicago at change.org and sign the petition because we're going to be uh, pushing that this year. 
our directory, uh, we've been talking about our directory, but our directory is right around the corner of black businesses here in Chicago. Uh, everybody can play a part. Everybody can play a role. We have other directories out here and uh, we just can't have enough of anything. Um, we all have to have to make our contribution. And this is uh, one of the ways that we're making our contribution. So let's get to our interview with uh, Sister Amani here. Um, your, your establishment is located in the quarry. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Uh-huh. And the quarry is at 2423 E75th. Is that 75th or 79th Street? 75th. Let me get this right. Yes. 75th Street. Okay, that's right. And uh, I remember when the quarry uh was established back in 2008. And uh I think it was around 2008. Probably. I'm not good with you. Okay. And it was an arts culture events. Um Sister um, or Dr. Ifunsa Wright right. had her uh, was bringing her uh, vegetables and you know foods from the farm there every Saturday. Um, there were artists in there. They had artwork, jewelry, clothing, um, and so it is a place and, and we where um, our culture mm -hmm. is. Is presented and you're there. Yeah, we, I mean, we were there with the Healthy Food Hub as well. Okay, Dr. you were part of Healthy Food Hub. Okay. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. So you had you had the bean pies there. Then. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, and so they also have uh, they still have live jazz. Yes, ma'am. There and what nights are the live jazz at the quarry? So for moving forward, it will be two Fridays out of the month so they could check with um on the quarry q u a r r y quarry.com um, org website or okay okay yeah. and so she and so she rents out space and she has some other businesses yeah. in there so you can that correct we have entertainment spaces we have what i call the big room and the small room and okay it's a nice size as well but and okay has the stage is where we do the jazz and okay have um the back patio uh where we'll have real men cook for father's day what is that okay uh father's day is it that's coming up in june yeah but on father's day on that sunday on father's day yeah, we'll okay real men cook. but this sunday um we're gonna have a chili cook-off it's a vegan chili cook-off Hmm. It may not all be vegan, but I think it will mainly be most vegan uh, chili. And it's a company that makes a vegan chili base. And they'll be giving those out for free. This Okay. Okay. Hmm. Wow. And I noticed you said we're going to have. And see, you're a business in there. And you're not just a business in there, but you're a part of a community right there within the uh, quarry in the South Shore area. Yes, that's true. So that's going to be what time? What time is that going to be? Mm -hmm. Vegan chili. The, the chili cook off. I want to say it's eleven or twelve o'clock. Okay. My uh, website, Imani's Originals, or you could check the South South Side. Um, oh gosh, Real Man Charities, and we'll be posting it for this Sunday. Okay. Okay. So when someone comes into uh Imani's uh original bean pies and specialty shop. Mm -hmm. What will they be able to experience? What will they find? First of all, we eat the dessert first around there. So <laughs> the first <laughs> find is our pies. We have original, we have our home the one with the homemade cream cheese frosting on top, and then we have vegan bean pies as well. Um Okay. So our vegan is original, blueberry, apple, or peach. Okay. And okay. Also put fruit in some of our original as well. That's why people have to visit because we love to give out samples and, and let you kind of experience. In fact, we had a brother that came, he heard us on another on another uh radio station 
and he okay. brainy grabbed two large pies. When he got home, he didn't realize that he grabbed an original and an original with strawberries. Oh, wow. <laughs> they, he said, now strawberry is my favorite. <laughs> he said, it well, you know, this is you're, the, uh, the bean pie. When I think about the bean pie, you know, it has such a significance uh, to me and in our community. Um, I remember coming up um, when they had the Salam restaurant on Cottage Grove. Oh, wow. Uh, there were a number of Muslim restaurants that mm -hmm. uh, had the whiting fish. And, and I would always get, I mean, you couldn't leave without, without getting the bean pie. Yes, ma'am. So I'm a historian. I know about that through history. I wasn't here doing it, like, but I, I know about it through, you know, studying history and interviewing elders, which is like one of my favorite. Uh, well, that's something I would like to talk about a little bit tonight, mm -hmm. because I know, um, you know, um, I've, I've read How to Eat to Live, you know, mm -hmm. the, both of the editions of that. Um, you know, I know about Elijah Muhammad and I know he um, promoted, uh, well, first of all, eating the navy bean because the bean pie is made out of navy bean, mm -hmm. right? Right. Okay, and, and, you, and you can pick up wherever you want to in here because well, you know more I, about this than I do. I want to go there, but I don't want to leave where we, you know, letting people know what they would expect at Imani's Originals. Because okay. hopefully you get bean pie, but we do have bean soup as well. So we have um, soup, salads, and sandwiches we offer. Okay. As well. We have like a veggie. So we partner with just sandwiches. Okay. Black owned business. Um, many of you may have heard of them. They won the um, grant from uh, Father Flager. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the grant that he gave. Sure. Right. So we partnered with them on the sandwiches. So they do a vegan a, a vegan sandwich full of vegetables. It's so good with different mm -hmm. hummus. Um, it's, it's really good. That's my favorite. Yeah, because I tried are, to get one, but I think they have ran out. <laughs> this week. And okay. that she also does like a turkey, turkey, turkey sandwich. Um, so a lot of people like that one, but I, I kind of tried to let them know that they're sleeping on the veggie one. That was oh, okay. And okay. it's a, um, a gluten-free ciabatta bread. Okay. Yep. And you wouldn't know it if, unless mm -hmm. I, you wouldn't know it was gluten-free. So is the bread, uh, uh, baked? Is that fresh baked or? Um, I'm, I believe, well, I don't know who makes the, the, uh, gluten-free bread, but I'm, I'm sure mm -hmm. it's made somewhere other than where the, the bread for the turkey sandwich is made. Okay. Usually okay. the, the gluten, that's one of the things a lot of people asked us for a gluten-free pie, but we would have to have someone else, you know, we, it, we would, it's not a good idea to make it in the same facility with gluten. Okay. That's okay. one of the. <laughs> okay. So yeah, eating eating gluten free products is a big thing now. If you know for people's for people's health, right? And so you know, operate out of the kitchen at the Corey Event Center, but mm -hmm. we have a small specialty store in the front when you first walk in. And so in there, it's like it's it's you can. Some people do grab and go of the pies. Even that some like to buy the soups cold so they could take it home for later. So mm -hmm. we do that. But we also have other gift products where we've um, used some of our uh, friends and value partners, um, things like Twisted Rose Metal. Um, she makes the, Sister Lala makes the copper wire and stones. Uh, okay. So a lot of people love that. Um, mm -hmm. We also have like Shea Butter Whips from SAW Variety Store, which is another store that we partner with um in the past okay and um so we have their products their oils and shea butter whips we have chicago matas um products okay which, brother derek brother derek riley yes he supplies us with a lot of stuff <laughs> to be honest with you but okay uh, the black seed oil the moringa um that those are like our hot things is the um the healthy products sour and mm -hmm. so 
make drinks, we make uh, hibiscus tea, lemonades, you know, so, something that people could enjoy with their food. Okay, so are those items that are made to order, um, um, are they in the cooler? Or like if you come in and you want to get the hibiscus tea, that's something you can right. order when you get there? Oh, they're for grab and go. We've had some people order, call in and order like they want a case of them as well. But if you just come in the store, it's grab and go. We also have sea moss. So we try to give our people, introduce them to things that will make them he healthy. That started because uh, prior to moving into the quarry and trying um, retail, we were only doing wholesale. So we were stopping out of health food stores. Okay. Uh, and we oh, what health food, now, now what health food stores are you uh, supplying to? Uh, Southtown Health Foods. Okay. Southtown health Foods and Country Club Hills. Bon Sante Health Foods in High Park and um, Chicago Health Foods and on the Gold Coast. We also supply Go Green Community Fresh Market. Mm -hmm. A lot of people may have seen me. I was on their steering committee. I do a lot with the Man Center and I live in Inglewood. So, okay. That store is important to me as well as Culture Connection, which is sure. sure. Those are my two, you know. That they're in my neighborhood, so those are what I call my two babies. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. So and so we have other products um, like that. People will have to really come to to, to see. Um, we're actually changing. I don't want to talk too much about it until we do it. That store is going to be a different experience for people. Mm -hmm. We're working on it. It's in the works, and okay. when it does. I'm going to let you know, and maybe we can come and talk about it. That would um, be great. That would yeah. be great. We would love to do that. But but that's my pet peeve, is I think that we all should find ways to unite and mm -hmm. um, and and move forward in doing so. I mean, find ways. So you'll always hear me say we and us, because that's, that's right. We are our solution, and that's what That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. So, that's right. Back to what you were saying about. Okay, so all right, so they can come there. We can get all different kinds of bean pies and healthy drinks and sandwiches and the bean soup. And then you're also supporting mm -hmm. some other businesses right. um, that have the shea butter and jewelry and um, other items like that. Yes, okay, ma'am. So, so, so we're. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We have a soup line. So there's. Bean soup, we have uh, vegetable soup, chicken noodle soup, red lentil soup. So we do different ones. Our okay. bean, of course, is our mainstay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the bean soup, the chicken noodle soup is our mainstay. But we do other things like chili. Um, and, we, and we try to make sure we cater to vegan and non-vegans alike. Okay. Now, do you ever do events? Um People have you to come with your pies for different events or if somebody wanted to um, order foods for an event. Yes, we come in or they could or would they go online? Is there an online order? So usually they call because it's usually specific to something like we just not too long ago had a young lady that ordered for she works for a health um it's like a health organization for seniors and mm -hmm. they were big thing and they ordered like a lot of pies what they wanted personal for each senior they gave them each a hibiscus tea and a pie okay okay so most people call because it's specific and then we you know work it out with what they want to do okay. and you yeah, know like they did they fed 500 people so we've and Iman Center often does it for uh, during Ramadan. So we okay. are able to. Okay. So you're doing a large uh, distribution. Yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. How long have you been doing this? So we started as a homeschool project in about, I want to say it was about 2005, 2006, mm -hmm. somewhere. Um, so I had a, day, a home daycare and okay. I also with my children. So I started the daycare in 2000, January 1st, 2000 to be exact. And um, so around, I want to say 05, um, the Navy Bean was the project. 
We were studying how it received its name from the United States Navy because it's a staple food um, that has the nutrients needed, you know, for survival. So mm -hmm. we did a little research and a few fun facts and and we always incorporate making the food together if it's a project that mm -hmm. we can bet on. So we made um, three things, bean soup, bean pie, and bean salad. So okay. they, they were used to. The bean pie was something new. So we were all excited about it. The bean salad was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't come out. But no. a lot of <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Well, that, hey, that it was a lesson. So yes. there's a lot to talk about mm. in the uh, lesson, you know, yes. in terms of what went right and what and what went wrong. Right. You know. That's, <laughs> maybe <laughs> make that anymore. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anymore. Okay. Yeah. So they made up the recipes. So no, they didn't mess. They were, so it was a day. They were young. The oldest. Okay daughter and she may have been like seven at the time or something like that so okay, okay. Yeah. just That's letting it. them have the experience put it together and, you know they help put everything in yeah mm -hmm. i mean it worked out well because they all grew up to pretty much know how to cook so okay <laughs> yeah. so so how did this evolve into a business for you so I, my husband was um saying this wow this this is good you know everybody thought the pie was good it's like this mm -hmm. would be business and i'm like nah, i don't know but what we did was we used it in a, a fundraiser mm -hmm. a week fundraiser and it went well we actually raised more than we were trying to raise and people kept coming back asking so after thinking about it and we kept i kept making it here and there i said well it would be a good thing to show our youth that we can make and manufacture our own products. Sure. You know, sure. and so uh, fast forward to now, um, my children, my bo I call them all mine, but mm -hmm. my body, as well as some of the children that were in the daycare have helped us to grow the business uh, to the point where literally a lot of times people would see me and little children and they're all now. So they can bring more, they actually bring more back to the table um, and they could look at it from a, a different vantage point because they've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, right? That's um, right. Went to college. They We have one that became an accountant, a mm -hmm. couple of business consultants, um, but they're business consultants. But one of them went to uh, medical school. He graduated from Morehouse School of Medicine. The other one, uh, engineering. So they come from those vantage points. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and consulting in business. Then we have regular artists that um, do all kind of art throughout the city um, mm -hmm. and can bring something to us as well. And just, uh, I mean, we have everything. <laughs> when I think about the youth, they've grown up to all be assets to the community one way or the other. We have, my, my youngest daughter is a hairstylist and, and still okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have, yeah, and that's one of the projects I wanted to work on. One of the young ladies that was in my daycare is living on the West Coast, and she ordered pies. And when mm -hmm. I took the idea, and I mean, all of them said, oh, I'd love to be a part of that. Okay, okay. And another one of my, outside of just unifying my, another thing for me is showing our youth, the youth of Chicago, we have so many awesome young people. But Absolutely. You know, on the news and hear the opposite. Mm -hmm. Us as, as people like you, that we can bring these young people on and, and show the world what we really have here. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when they took um, art and, and music out of, the, out of the schools, you know, it took away the opportunity for, you know, that's where you can go and be creative and express yourself, mm -hmm. you know? And, and they took that away. Recess, you know, how you, they talk about teaching a, a conflict resolution. Well, a lot of that happened out on the playground right. while the children were playing. You know, they were trying to work things out, 
you had opportunity to work things out themselves and you take all of that away and now you want to come in and create a program for things that should just be happening naturally. And, and uh, what you have done exposing these children to um, some entrepreneurial uh, mm -hmm. activities and, and, and cooking um, and preparing and, and looking at the, like you say, the uh, challenges and, and the mm -hmm. good things that come out. That's all a part of life. And, and uh, that, those are the fundamental things that they need, mm -hmm. no matter what it, they decide they want to be. Yes, ma'am. We deal with the good and the bad, you know, the positive and the negatives, you know, the ups mm -hmm. and the downs. That's all mm -hmm. a part of it. Yes. And so that's why a business is so important. Again, as we say, you know, the opportunity you have to give back, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the opportunity you have to mentor these children, mm -hmm. which is what you have done. And, mm -hmm. and I know within the um, nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad, you know, he talked about entrepreneurship. He talked about doing for self. That's true. That's true. And that's what's important. Yeah. And when we talk about any injustice that's going on at the end of the day, you know, as uh, they say, God bless the child who has his own, his mm -hmm. own. But we have to work to be, to have our own so that okay. we have that when you have something that people need from you, they tend to treat you better. That's right. Right. That's right. They know that we need to trade. We need ginger from them or we need, you know, it could be the smallest of things. Mm -hmm. We need navy beans from them. Mm -hmm. And that we need them, then we treat you a little bit different. That's right. <laughs> Which that's is right. that's why it's so important that we sh we we show our youth in a good light because it makes the other ones see another, you know, a way to go. That's I want to be clean. I want to be, I want to be in the limelight as well. That's right. That's but right. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have to we have to begin to do that. That's what this um, organization is about. That's what you're about. That's what so many other people are about. Right. Um, and as in my short conversation, you know, with the uh, minister uh, Willis uh, that called, um, you know, that's what he about. And there's so many people out here that are that are making a difference, that are working to make a difference. And so we just have to be consistent and yes. keep, keep doing and we, that. As we will. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So we were talking about those beans, those Navy beans. Um, I remember uh, there was something about the Navy bean in comparison to other beans in yeah. terms of its... Um, nutritional uh, quality uh, mm -hmm. in terms of it being better for our health. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? The fiber, uh, the necessary fiber and proteins um, and, and minerals that's needed. So when the soldiers would go out to war, they knew that they could count on taking the, you know, the dry, the Navy bean, and they could use that to, to make sure that the soldiers had the nourishments that they want. Well, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us the same way. And he said that you could actually live off of just the Navy beans alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, even for me, um, my that was what I introduced to my children once they were being kind of weaned off of um, nature's milk to give that I would actually make a milk from the Navy beans. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's something else you can make with the navy beans. I never thought about making milk from oh, yeah. the navy beans. Mm -hmm. So you just take them and um, uh, the dry bean and uh, and and grind it into a powder. I would cook mine. You cook and, it, and then I strain. I would um, blend it and then strain it. Like you could. I don't. You know, most people we use the equipment nowadays. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Other than that, they may have used cheesecloth or something like that. Sure, sure. You could actually use um, the um, what you call it the, the the food chopper, the food processors. Okay, and something like a Vitamix. The form that you want it down to. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
I like the food processor better though, because you can you can get it grind down to almost like a liquid, and then you then I, you take a good water and put with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And drink that as a milk. Drink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you use that milk for cooking or just I, for drinking? Use it for the children. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, as I'm as I'm thinking, you know, the, you 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 started out with the students. You know, well, the children is several three items you were able to make with the navy bean, and oh, we've made now all you're talking about milk and yeah, and we that would be something to see. Just what all can you do with that with that yeah, navy bean? Burgers with the with the navy beans. Navy bean burgers, okay. I, well, my when I had my daycare, we didn't eat any uh, meat meat at all. I think we ate. No, yeah, we ate fish sometimes, but a lot of children don't always like fish, so. Um, we were mo basically <laughs> vegetarian. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Vegetarian ran daycare. So we made burgers with navy beans and lentils. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That being two different kinds, not together. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've taken mm -hmm. those, you've taken that, the, the pies and, and now you've taken them to another level. Cause when I, I remember when I first started eating, uh, the pies, they were just the original mm -hmm. plain pie, but now you added other fruits to them, you know, and made okay. them taste even, even better, you know, or different. Let's just say a more, <laughs> more, more of a variety. Yeah, at the end of the day, a lot of people ask me, what's the best seller? That's what I was. That was one of my questions tonight. <laughs> That's going to be one of my questions. What do you think it is? Well, I've only had the vegan, um, and and in the past, when I be, before I became a vegan, I've had the original. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of hard. I might okay. I'll take a guess. Mm -hmm. The uh, one with the cream cheese. No. Everyone say that the original. The original. There you go. There you Bye. go. Everybody likes the original. Hopefully, the original. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's always been good, and it's been a um, a good business for you. Um, and then my brothers out here that sell the papers and the bean pies have been able to, uh, you know, make money for mm -hmm. themselves and and also help support the nation with selling those pies. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, those 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 pies have been very um, helpful. Yes, ma'am. That's true. And they sold our pies for about a year from uh, Respect for Life bookstore when it was on 79th. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to say 2015. Okay. I'd be wrong. It, it probably was further than that. It, it was 2011 or something like that. Okay. More than likely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, so... Um, we began to put the pie, the pies in stores. Like um, first, we started with restaurants, um, okay. places like uh, Brother uh, Sean Michelle's homemade ice cream. When they were in Blue Island, they were among. Okay. Our oh, so you have some pies in uh, Sean and Michelle? Yeah, this was back in the beginning. Okay. They were like among our first. You know, we did a few restaurants, and then we began to put them in stores. Okay. Um, we had them in like Fair Play Foods, Ultra Foods at first. Um, we well, we actually first started with those health food stores that I named. Um, yes, Southtown. Uh, those were like our first stores. Then we mm -hmm. put them in like Fair Play Foods and things like that. And I can remember a manager calling from one of the the Fair Play Foods saying, um, "Some children just delivered the pies." <laughs> you said, "Oh, well, they seem to know what they what they were doing." Okay, absolutely. And hung up. It was just weird. It just it blew strange up. to him that some children. She said, "Well, they seem to have known." Absolutely. I, I know. Um, you know, I visited the continent. You know, I've had opportunity to visit the continent and go and stay in a village, and and the children there. Uh, they have responsibilities, you know, they have resp some responsibilities that you would actually give adults here. You know, I think mm -hmm. we underestimate 
and mm -hmm. and uh, our, our children and stifle their growth because we don't have that we have a lower expectation of them. Mm. And I think it might be the education system, the educational system, because when we go to school, what do they tell us? What's the best way to learn when we get what out on the field? Once we get out there, you got to get some experience under your belt, right? That's right. That's when right. You for whatever the discipline may have been, it could have been accounting, it could have been a business. That's right. Math or whatever, but still, at the end of the day, the best lesson is when you, you have the experience or you get some internships, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But why wait? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's experience is the best teaching. Right. And so once you, you know, we put them in, in position, then, you know, the, the sky's the limit. There is no limit. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. That's one of the things I was talking to two young people on our podcast the other week, and they were, we were talking about the schools and where they felt there need to be some changes. Mm -hmm. And one of them is in terms of what they're learning understanding why they're learning what they're learning. So that's where the experience comes in. Because right. when you're having the experience, then you understand why you need to know what mm -hmm. it is that they're teaching you. But we give them all of the information and then, you know, and then like you say, you come out depending on what type of job you get. If you haven't had those internships and practicums, you asking somebody to give me a chance. <laughs> No, or give me some experience. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we got to keep that in mind. And then. Okay. Oops. Seems like we lost uh, Sister Imani. Hopefully she will pop back in. Is everything okay now? Okay. Yeah. I can see you now. Okay, yeah, I probably should. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. That fix. Okay, sorry, <laughs> that made me lose my place. But um, all right. So, so yeah, oh, we were, what you we were all talking. Doing, yes, I was gonna say what you all are doing about books is awesome because now they're like um, telling people they don't even have to read anymore. Almost, um, you got AI can write for you, and if you. If you get, if you rid yourself of the ability to communicate, what do you have? That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah so that's a great idea um, that you have. Mm -hmm. I, and I think uh, books books are important. I mean, it's good to read online. I I I feel like there should always be a balance. Whatever it is that you're doing, you want to create a balance. To just go 100% technology, uh, you know, reading online uh, or, or getting the Kindle books, you know, there is something to be said from having a book in your hand. If that book belongs to you. You uh, mark some pages. You carry it around with you. You are more likely to develop a relationship and a greater interest in what's in that book. Um, and so, and then it's the types of books that our children need to be exposed to. That's important as mm -hmm. to why we, uh, support our bookstores. Right. And it gives a opportunity for parents to, uh, spend time with their, with their children, you know, yeah. reading. And, uh, there are a lot of book clubs out here, you know, um, the, where a lot of people are reading books and, and coming together and talking about what they're reading. It's happening out here. You know, that's not something that is talked about, but it is happening. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. In Absolutely. fact, one of my mentors, when I talked with her on the phone uh, a month or so ago, that was one of her main uh, pieces of advice is mm -hmm. sure that I'm reading some books on you know, business or, or something that I'm, whatever it is that I'm working on or trying to do, I need to be reading books that'll, uh, you know, educate me in that, mm -hmm. in that light. That was one of her main things that she pushed. She even told me, uh, because I'm not really a 
audio book person, mm -hmm. but she kind of gave me a reason where I could actually even use that sometimes. Okay. And, and she was pretty good. Now I like to do it when we're in the kitchen. <laughs> and I'm also starting to see more people starting to, um, to write. You know, we have more uh, young authors out here writing poetry, writing books. Um, I'm seeing fathers writing books, you know, about their relationships with their children. Um, so there's opportunity here to not only read, but to, to begin to author and write books um, mm. that I think our young people should be encouraged to do. Uh, yeah, making, uh, creating cookbooks, you know, recipe books, mm -hmm. uh, journaling. Oh yes. So I yes. think I think all of that is important. Um, so with your business, what I'm hearing, um, you're mentoring young people, which is one of the reasons we support businesses. As I said in the beginning, uh, with your business, you're creating. Um, entrepreneurial opportunities for other people. Uh, you're creating jobs for other people. You're providing a service um, to the uh, community. And um, mm -hmm. so so what are, what would you say are some of the challenges that that you might be having with your with your business? Um, so we just uh, this is retail is new for us. Mm -hmm. So now we're um, you know, working on creative ways of getting people to uh, get in the foot traffic or people to come to where we are. That's one of our challenges now. Um, we were good with social media, but now we're, um, you know, it's we're getting a little more creative with the way we're marketing. We're talking about different things that we could do, different mm -hmm. things to offer. So that's that's a challenge. And then I think in business, uh, there's oftentimes the challenge of having worked in your business for so long that now you need to really look at working on your business. And that's when I, some of my youth came in, especially my uh, daughter. She's uh, decided to, she got a degree in accounting. She She's planning to go back for a master's degree. In the meantime, she wanted to help the family business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so that's why she was sitting there when I came in the store. <laughs> Get to work with me, so. <laughs> okay, okay, and come up with ideas. I'm sure she comes up with ideas. With ideas, but she also get to fix things that, um, the broken things, if you will. Okay. Business owners may know what I'm talking about, um, the, that working on the business to make sure that the, the, the paperwork system is in order, that we're mm -hmm. making sure we're recording everything, we're watching things, um, we're making sure that things are priced uh, correctly. It's, okay. it's just things. Um, the, so now we have a front end and back end system. So I'm used to working in the kitchen, but we got this front end as well, and we have to be communicate with each other and it's just so many different uh, uh what is it i always tell them there's so many different legs to this thing <laughs> it's, like, it's like we're over here then we're over there then but the beauty of it is once you get the proper system going mm -hmm. um and then it, it's it's like a, a, a it's running smooth right <laughs> uh-huh is this smooth ride? But um, I'm grateful because I do have people that um, around me, you know, that's innovative, that's mm -hmm. you know, excited, so they can come up with all these different ideas, and and they and they, you know, don't feel like we're just saying, oh, you just sit over there and be quiet. We don't need to hear from you. They actually have mm -hmm. awesome ideas, and it's 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 coming together. It's coming together pretty good too. So. So what do you, what do you, obviously you enjoy what you're, what you're doing. So what do you, what do you enjoy the most about what you, what you're doing? So everyone says what I, even when I start to talk, what I enjoy the most is watching um, the youth grow. Mm -hmm. grow up. Now they looking like I'm grown, you know, <laughs> so okay. like from anywhere, you know, from, 
uh, well, we have some younger ones, but the ones that are working with us in the realm that I'm talking about now, they're like 19 to 33, I think. Okay. Okay. 33. So um, just watching them grow and watching them learn and, and see some of the things that they made. Now they see some of the things that I was going through. Sure. Um, there, there's ups and downs in business. Okay. And people don't know that. Sometimes it might be, hey, this is this is what we made this week. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody got to get paid and everybody wants to get paid, right? Sure. But the, where does that leave the owner sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think when my, my daughter first saw that as the accountant, I noticed her eyes said, okay, all that work you do. <laughs> but you you take know, care of your people things it might sometimes you gotta wait you know uh -huh. so okay okay so i get it when i when we look at um the condition of our community right now and you talked about uh the experience that our children need to have is at, at school we need to enhance their experiences mm -hmm. What do you think, um, you know, we have a lot of problems, you know, all the violence that is going on in our community right now. And mm -hmm. they're saying that, you know, um, our young people don't want to work. Um, what is your what is your take on that? I, I don't say that our youth don't want to work. They mm -hmm. just think differently than we see it. OK. Like what we think work is, is hard work. You're tired when you come home every day. Yeah. Them don't think that way because some of them can figure out other ways of making money. Mm -hmm. I've had some young people talk to me about that. It's like they say, mm -hmm. work. I don't want to work at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Or I don't want to work um, cutting grass. But I, I'm an artist. I want to. I want to draw, or I want to, or I, I create. Mm -hmm. and make money online and they show me some of the ways that they make money online and it's like wow okay <laughs> and, they're, and they're actually making uh making money making so, money i don't say that all our youth don't want to work it's mm -hmm. just that they even i'll give you an example with making the pies i've worked 24 hours literally i'm like i'm still in this kitchen like i'm still here Mm -hmm. but no they, they've seen it now since they've come in we do six hour days six days a week mm -hmm. I'm like wait I actually been on three vacations this this year I'm, this year wow I don't even go on vacations I'm I'm like wow they just see things differently and I remember when it was we were in like Whole Foods, Peach Fresh Market, running all over, <laughs> doing all of this work, and mm -hmm. telling me, "Why don't you just sell the pies online?" I couldn't see it; it didn't make sense. Okay. I'm like, one small pie. If you just order one small pie, you're gonna pay up to depending on where you are, anywhere from nine to twelve dollars for shipping only. Oh my goodness. So I started the online, but I, I told people they had to buy two large pies. Okay. And that, that would make it that would make it make more sense. It made more sense to me. And <laughs> that's why you're not getting that many orders. Okay. She said, just let the people make a decision. Mm -hmm. Really? I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that people ordering and right from across the street. To have something delivered to them, mm -hmm. they were showing me all of these things, and I'm saying, "You're kidding me." So once I did it, then we getting orders, bing, 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 bing. And it was to the point where I could tell, I could almost tell if it's an elder or not. Okay. <laughs> order. By you the know, order. By the way they order. Okay. So what would be the what what would be the difference? Um. They they don't either they don't know what they're doing they start calling or, <laughs> or 
down there and figure out what well, if I ordered two pies. You know, they they actually taking the time to do that. And a lot of the young people, they're moving faster. They just want to get it. They just want to get it. And you remember that now it's called Blue Lacuna, but I, it used to be called Blue 1647, I think, when it was on Ashland, the tech center. Mm -hmm. There's a McDonald's right across the street. So okay. there on a trip, I used to always take the children there. And the techs were ordering McDonald's online. And it was being delivered across the street. I'm mm. like, are you kidding me? We're sitting here making money. We don't have time to walk over there. I'm like, you are you serious? So it so it's a paradigm, it's a paradigm shift here going on <laughs> right in right in your face, you know, right, right in your space. And we're looking at, like you say, work, 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 you know, <laughs> which is what the, a lot of these businesses want. Um, and I see it, uh, you know, I'm a speech pathologist and, and I see people, um, you know, I see a difference with the younger people that are coming in and, and how, how we're willing, my generation, we're willing to work, <laughs> you know, the long hours and, um, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a paradigm shift going on. I want to, I want to. I wish my daughter was right here, but I want to say she had to be in like in her first years of college. She so she was homeschooled through high school and then she went to Kennedy King mm -hmm. when she was 17, got her associate's degree there, then went to Governor State. But I, she was at Kennedy King and she was writing a paper for a class. And I think it could have been some type of business class or mm -hmm. something. Because in it, she's writing, she told me she's writing about me. And okay. we, we want our children to write about us, right? Okay. She was writing something to the effect saying why maybe something happened in my mom's childhood that make her think she has to work hard. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's a, that would be an interesting read. I said, yeah, yeah, something did I, happen in your childhood. <laughs> It's right. Absolutely. Your but, parents told you you got you got to work, and they made you work. Right, and, and they that's, expected you to work. Like you, she feels she have to work really hard, but you don't. You know, I don't remember the paper. Or what I would, you're right. I would really like to see that because it really made me think. Like, wow, is that what she thinks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's what it is. I think so. Uh, Mommy Vet Moyo had an idea uh, of a, of doing an event, and and I really want to make sure that our youth help put this together. It's okay. something like wisdom of the elders, mm -hmm. and where we bring in the youth and the elders together. Mm -hmm. Right? I think that's not what's happening enough. Okay. And there's people not understanding young people, but remember that which you continue to say and and speak into me mm -hmm. i may begin doing okay so okay. we all are look our youth are a little more spoiled than we were you know they didn't come up like you said they didn't probably come up the way we did they didn't have to have a job at 14 and you that's know <laughs> that's right right mm -hmm. so they're different but if we begin to listen to one another then we can have some kind of understanding Right. But I think, and I think you also have, they have to, you have to understand on both sides, there's something you can learn, you know, they can learn much. They can learn from you. And right. then there's some things you can learn from them. Exactly. Um, yeah, absolutely. But continue to tell them they're lazy. They don't mm -hmm. want to. Okay. Yeah. That's lazy. why I brought up the, you know, that's, that's the, commentary that you're hearing out here mm -hmm. these young people they're lazy they don't want to work you know but then you have mm -hmm. some that are just being very creative um and and they are working and doing their own thing now i i, I can't say that for the ones that are out here you know mm -hmm. robbing people you know that's another conversation there and it's a different upbringing sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes when you rob um people of everything and they have nothing, and all they have left is to take from somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Right. You talked about it. If we're not allowing them to grow, learn and be creative and figure out what it is that they may. A lot of people don't even know what they they're good at and what they love. That's because, right. Because they haven't had that opportunity. Right. They haven't had that opportunity. Right. I remember a young a young man, I'm not going to say his name, but I met him. He, um, His girlfriend encouraged him to go to college with her. He went. He said no one. They really pushed him, you know, talked to him about going to college. Mm -hmm. He had graduated high school. He wasn't thinking about anything. That's he right. went, did very well, graduated. And just like there are careers out here that people don't even know about. Exactly. You know? Types of jobs that people have. You know, they used to have career day at school. You know, they would at least expose them to some careers. But there are a lot of interesting uh, careers out here that people have partaken in. You know, and I think that maybe mm -hmm. this might be something that might be interesting to address. Right. Uh, but we are at the top of the hour. And this has been a, a very interesting conversation uh, with Sister mm -hmm. Imani Muhammad of uh, Imani's original bean pies and specialty shop yes. <laughs> on East 75th Street in the quarry. Inside right? the event center. Inside of the quarry, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you um, you can just get any kind of pie that you want, family. You know, she's got bean pies with apple, peach, you said berry, strawberry, oh. blueberry. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the cream is a cream cheese with a peach topping. Peach topping. It's okay. the cream cheese with a peach topping and it tastes totally different from it just changes a beautiful uh, it's delicious. That's all. Okay. I, yeah. okay. And you and you recommend to heat them up when you get home? Well, the vegan ones. The I vegan like so, ones. Uh, and it be maybe because I've baked them for so many years too, but okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So you got the vegan pie, vegan choice, and then you got bean soups. Tell us, tell us about your other items that you have again before we go. Bean soups, um, chicken noodle soup, uh, chilies. Uh, we have various soup of the day. We have just sandwiches in there. We have salads as well. Okay. Come by and don't forget to come Saturday afternoon. Okay. And then you have the drinks. You have the juices. You say you have. The, hib the hibiscus teas, uh, lemonades. We're gonna uh, we we do some juicing sometimes as well. So you gotta come by. We like to switch things up. Oh wow, that's and wonderful. <laughs> well, I think I think you have a lovely place. Um, I think you have a wonderful business, and I really like the way your business started. You know, you're you work, working with your working with the young children in the preschool and getting. Mm -hmm teaching them the experience of, of, of creating and uh, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. And it's just evolved is what you have done and you're continuing. You will continue to evolve. Thank you. you have the young people around you. So I like, I like what you're doing. Thank you. And I love what you all are doing as well. And Absolutely. thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. So don't forget family, go to rrgbc.org this podcast and all of our other podcasts are archived on our website. If you want to come back and, and watch again, uh, we've done over 100 podcasts of Black businesses here in the Chicago area. And uh, also subscribe so you can become a winner for our book, Feeding the Soul, Because It's My Business by Tabitha Brown and Sister Imani uh it gives this book some good accolades because she has read it. And uh, so if you want to have a chance to win that book, just subscribe. You can also go to our website and make a donation, uh, which helps our cause. And uh, we have an online store. We can purchase items that will help our cause. And uh, we just uh, want to thank you, Sister Money, for doing what you're doing. And thank you, family, for coming. Mm -hmm. And now we are to say good night. Oh, good night. Oh,